I'm about to break into this ant farm, but not because I want to. I literally have no other choice. And not only that, if I wait too long, this ant colony will die. Their one and only queen is trapped inside this old ant farm and needs to be evacuated. So will I be able to save this colony, or will we all watch in anguish and sorrow as an empire crumbles to the ground? Prepare for the utter chaos that will soon commence, because it is almost time to kidnap the queen. We start our journey here. My big-headed ant colony had just escaped their ant farm and were swarming my entire desk. There were at least a thousand escaped ants, so my only choice was to vacuum them all to their demise. But why did they escape in the first place? Well, it turns out they were looking for the rest of their colony. This is the other half. On the adjacent side of my ant room was another few thousand ants. The two swarms were once connected during a nest relocation, but they never moved the queen out from the old nest, and so I needed to step in and do it myself. I've set up this plastic bin coated in baby powder to prevent any ants from escaping, as well as these three smaller containers to keep the old nest off the ground. And now, with everything ready, it is time to officially begin the mission, Kidnap the Monarch. One, two, all three tubes were removed and the ants once again had access to the outside world. They poured out of each opening to attack me, but what they didn't know was that I came equipped with an ant vacuum ready to suck up and stop every single worker in its tracks. I sucked up about a hundred ants on the first go, which was absolutely crazy because that barely made a dent in the amount of ants that were still running around. Before any more ants had the chance to swarm outside the nest, I disconnected their old outworld and after sucking up even more loose ants, it was time to properly break into this ant farm. For this next step, I had to be extra careful to make sure the ants didn't get all over the place. So I ripped off the glass and out came a swarm of angry ants. There were tiny miner workers and huge soldiers all prepared to bite me if I ever got too close. The ants flooded the plastic bin below, but before they could start escaping, I began using my ant vacuum again to suck up all of these ants at large. My lungs were struggling as I inhaled ants through this metal straw, but I was committed to move this colony once and for all. To say this vacuum filled up rather quickly would be an understatement because it only took a few seconds of sucking up these ants before I had to dump them into another container. This constant battle between the ants and I was only just beginning, as they would continue to clog up this vacuum with their own bodies and consistently fill it up over the course of an entire hour. However, during this first incursion, I noticed there was no sign of the queen. Admittedly, I was a little worried. At this point, I hadn't seen the queen for the past few days, and part of me was really scared that her own workers and soldiers might have already killed her. There was only one way to find out, and in order to do so, I had to rotate the nest 180 degrees and prepare to remove the second pane of glass, because as it turns out, this is a two-sided nest with even more ants on the other side. I removed the second pane of glass, and as I prepared for the absolute worst, not many ants were trying to escape. In fact, they seemed more scared and reclusive this time, which was not normal behavior for a colony of this magnitude. They were pouring out like water from a busted pipe just a few minutes ago. Why weren't they doing that now? Little did I know what I was about to witness, and how greatly it would affect this move. As I finished sucking up another vial of ants, I noticed something out of the corner of my eye. Is that... No way. I had just found the queen and she was on the move. A party of minor workers ushered her into another nest chamber, hoping I wouldn't see them. But my eyes were just too good. I could see the queen no matter where she went. And as I moved in to extract her from the nest, my forceps got swarmed by the entourage of minor workers protecting her. She slipped out from my grasp and out of my sight deeper into the nest. I had missed the queen and no matter where I looked, I couldn't find her. She literally disappeared with no trace, and I had no choice but to accept defeat for now. However, I would make sure to come back later with an even better plan, one of which you or the ants would not expect. Two hours went by, and I was once again ready to kidnap the queen. She was in there somewhere, and with my new plan, I was fairly confident that I would find her. But before I had a chance to start again, I couldn't help but notice that the ants in the new nest were retaliating and had swarmed the outworld also in search for their other half. 
things were really getting out of hand. So to calm the ants down, I reapplied an extra layer of anti-escape barrier and gave the ants a dubia roach to eat. So with this half now distracted, I could continue with the new plan. To start, I wanted to suck up as many loose workers as possible, because there was still an overwhelmingly amount of ants in this nest. Less workers in the way meant that I'll be able to catch a glimpse of the queen much easier. So with a lot of these new workers now removed, I decided to change the direction of the wind. Instead of sucking air in, I would blow air out and into the nest chambers, triggering an explosive reaction from the ants. They hated the wind being in their nest and did everything to escape it. This went on for several minutes, with no luck in finding the queen. I was beginning to lose hope and wondered if while the two hours I was gone, all the stress from earlier must have killed her. This bitter thought of the colony's end made me feel cold inside, but like lightning striking a tree, I went into flames of excitement when I noticed that the queen was being moved by another group of workers and soldiers. I reached in carefully with my featherweight forceps, pulled out the queen, and finally placed her on my hand. I could not believe it. I had finally, after an entire day's work, found and captured the queen. She was stunning and beautiful, but she looked hurt. Actually, she looked really hurt, and that was not a good sign. Okay, this is a little misleading. At first, with the missing antenna and missing legs, it might look like the queen is in a lot of pain, but I promise you, she is not. And the truth is, she was like this since I got her. I assumed she was either in a really bad fight or had escaped a predator a long time ago. Either way, she's way tougher than any ant I know. But now that we officially kidnapped the queen, it was time to finally reunite her with her other workers. Queen in hand, I slowly lowered her into the new outworld, while at the same time being swarmed by all of her worker ants. She sort of rolled off, which feels bad to laugh about, but it just looked too funny not to. My only fear during this interaction with the queen and her workers was that she would be attacked for either smelling like me or for being separated for way too long. Luckily, she was accepted with open arms by her daughters as they guided her safely into her new home. To make sure all the other ants would move too, I connected them to the new nest once again and watched as they brought the baby ants, aka Brood, into the tube and into the new nest. So with the queen reunited and the colony as one entity, it was time to get started on one of my most dangerous projects yet. These ants are huge, equipped with a paralyzing sting, and are the scariest ants I've ever worked with. So to not miss that video or any future ant videos, like this video, subscribe, and I'll see you later.